good to see you. Let's all stand up real quick. If you're new here, we're so glad you're here, and uh, we're excited about what we're celebrating, amen? We're celebrating not just the death of a king, but the resurrection of a king. And I think it's awesome when you read in Matthew that when he died, people, people rose from the dead. When you read in Matthew chapter 27, when he died, people actually came out of their tombs. Um, the graves were opened, and when he was resurrected, they were also resurrected. And so what that says to us, he didn't just conquer death for himself. He didn't just conquer sin. He conquered it for us. He conquered death for us. And so we sing, we're going to sing three more songs. I encourage you to worship with us, remembering that we are alive in Christ.
seated. I have been given the extreme honor to coach my daughter's four-year-old soccer team. It's an honor I take very seriously. And as the coach, I get to decide how the team is doing. And well, the Bumblebees, that's their name, they're great on offense. They love to score goals. We have a little problem with the defense though. I'm working with them, but they think defense is when you run alongside the other team and you actually encourage the other team to score against you. That's their definition of defense. During our last game, I was encouraging them, remember when you play defense, you gotta get in front of them, you gotta get in front of them. In the first half, the other team had scored like four goals on us. 
And sure enough, they're going to score again. And my team is just running alongside of them, smiling with huge smiles. And this whole time, parents aren't yelling, but they're strongly encouraging their children to start playing defense. And in that moment, I look up and all the players that were on the field for at least my team had this huge smile on their face. They were getting destroyed in the game, but they didn't care because they were just happy to be on the team and on the field. And in that moment, God showed me something that I wanna share with you. In life, the game of life, there's pressures. Some that we put on ourselves, some that comes from external circumstances. But I don't care what the score of your game is, you are on the winning team. So put a smile on your face and be excited because we know in the end, we win. So today, as you come and take the communion, as you come and take communion, take the wafer, dip it in the cup. I want you to do it with a smile on your face. And if you don't, I'm gonna have one of the bumblebees come up and show you how it's done. <laughs> because we are on the winning team. Let's pray. God, thank you that it doesn't matter what's going on around us. We can celebrate because we know we are on the winning team because of what we're celebrating this morning in the resurrection of Jesus. So God, whatever pressures are maybe on us right now, allow us just to put those aside and be thankful that we know you. In Jesus' name, amen. Front rows, you may come at this time.
My name is Josh Gallagher, and I'm the growth pastor here at Grace. If you're visiting with us for maybe the first time or even the second time, I specifically want to say thank you for spending time with us. Our hope is that you find some encouragement to pull you through the rest of the week, and your time here would be very positive in everything that you see, do from the message to the music to even what happens in the lobby. So thank you so much for being here. I wanted to let everyone know about a connection card. This is found inside your bulletin or in the seat in front of you. You can use this card to do three things. First, you can update any information that you'd like to share with us. Second, if you have any prayer requests, please put those down. We count it a privilege to pray over those. And finally, you can, just, you can sign up for our discovery classes. These are a series of classes that help you find and fulfill God's specific purpose for your life. So go ahead, fill those out, and we will collect those at the end of the service. We are obviously very excited about what is happening here at Grace this weekend. We have four services, one tonight and then three tomorrow. But we are very excited about what's happening next week. Next week we are starting our new series entitled Seek. And here to give you a little more information about it is a video. So please direct your attention to the screens. God promises us that we will find him when we seek him with all of our hearts. So if you're desiring a deeper relationship with God, you want his guidance or desire to meet him powerfully, you need to join us for a new series entitled Seek starting April 3rd. During this series, we will be covering five aspects of the Lord's Prayer. And to help people get the most out of this series, we wanted to provide people with multiple opportunities to seek God. First, we will have our weekly messages Sunday morning and Sunday night discussing how you can seek God through the Lord's Prayer. Second, you will have an engaging growth group experience with new teaching and questions that provide additional information that's not presented during the Sunday messages. Third, you will have the chance to sign up for the daily video devotionals. These two-minute daily devotionals are provided for you five days a week throughout this series. And finally, there will also be a 30 days of prayer experience during the month of April. During this time, you will be provided with the opportunity to come and pray with other people for 30 to 45 minutes twice a day in the auditorium. I believe that when we pray, God moves in our lives and our church as a whole. I really want you to join us for this new series as we seek God through prayer. Because when we seek Him, we will find Him. Inside your bulletin, there is a handout that looks much like this with the SEEK logo on it. That outlines all of the opportunities that are available to you for this series. If you'd like to start signing up for the, maybe the daily video devotion or the growth group experiences, you can check that and we will collect those at the end. Also, as you leave today, there will be a table in the lobby that you can stop by and get more information about that series that's starting next week. Now we're gonna take our tithes and our offerings. If you're visiting with us, please feel absolutely no obligation to give. This is just for our regular attenders and our members. Let's pray. God, thank you for everything that you have given to us. Most importantly, a relationship with you through Jesus Christ. I ask that you would take these gifts and these offerings right now and use them to spread the word of Jesus and the new life that we can have in him. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Thank you. 
Let's give a big thank you to all of our instrumentalists. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please stand so we can recognize you. Let's say a big thanks to our Grace Choir. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Devin, very much. And Mr. John can too. Thank you, John. Thank you, thank you. We will let you guys be seated. They have been working and practicing. So thank you for putting your uh, heart and soul into blessing us today. Hey, I want to say a, a special welcome to all of you uh, to our Easter weekend. You know, it's, you're getting the habit of saying a good morning. How many of you have already said good morning to somebody other than me? Yeah, I know some of you said it to me. Good evening. It's always great to have you here. A special welcome uh, for all of our guests here. We uh, appreciate so much you uh, coming and being a part Hey, I wanted to also join uh, Josh in inviting you next Sunday, Sunday morning. We have two services Sunday night. We don't have a Saturday night regularly, but next Sunday with our new Seek series, we're going to spend five weeks looking at the Lord's Prayer. How many of you grew up in a church where you said the Lord's Prayer every Sunday? Yeah, many of you did. And there's a very interesting phrase that Jesus uses when he introduces the Lord's Prayer. And uh, the Lord's Prayer is a wonderful prayer to learn, to memorize, to say as often as you like, but there's a very interesting phrase. Jesus does not say, this is what you are to pray. Does that surprise you? You, you can go check me. Uh, it's in the, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. He doesn't say, here's what you are to pray. He says, this is how you are to pray. So he's not really saying, hey, I want you to memorize these words, and this is what you're to say, and this is what you're to say. Actually, what he's saying is, I'm going to teach you how prayer works. I'm going to teach you how to pray. And so we are very excited on our teaching team as we lead you through the Lord's Prayer, not so much to memorize the, the words of each of the five lines, but we're going to take each of those lines and we're going to see how Scripture, other Scriptures uh, all, all through the Bible, can really help us understand, oh, this is how we are to pray. So we are very excited about that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, one other quick little note. Uh, many of you uh, who have been coming to Grace for some time, you know we have these discovery classes, and the 101 is called Discovering Membership. And that's where you come if you want to learn about membership and if you want to join our church. Well, for many of you, you know, we offer these on Sunday night. Many of you, you cannot come on Sunday night because of work or other obligations. All right, if that's you, like if you've been attending Grace and you've never joined and you've been coming 17 years, <laughs> but you really, you know, you just, you can't come on Sunday night. We have got you covered. In the bulletin, you'll read about it, but we're going to offer a, the discovery classes, one full run from 101 to 401 on Sunday morning. Okay, so we're going to start at 9 o'clock. We'll stop in the middle and have brunch together. It'll be a lot of fun, have some great food, and then we'll get you out of here when everybody else gets out at 12 o'clock. So, on your connection card, you can go ahead and circle that Class 101, Discovering Membership, and it's coming up April 10th, just around the corner, and we would love to have you be a part of that. All right, hey, listen, there's some great people. Now, here's the deal. I'm going to have you stand, but don't say good morning to anybody. All right, ready, go. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You may be seated. Thank you. 
Oh, and by the way, if you're a first-time guest, uh, before you leave, uh, we out in the lobby, you'll go to the lobby and lean left, you'll see the New Beginnings table. We have a free gift for you at the very end. So please, please don't leave without it. And somebody, a little birdie told me that there may be, there may be cookies on the way out in the lobby. I don't know. It could be a rumor, but it could be true. So uh, you, want, you might want to go out that, even if you parked over it, you might want to, it might pay. You know, one thing I always like to do, I always like to give good, practical advice uh, when we get together on the weekends. And, um, and this one just came across my desk. This one is really important for uh, husbands. All right, husbands, listen carefully. Research now proves that wives who carry about 20 extra pounds live longer than their husbands who bring it up. <laughs> Something that might save your life, you know? Just a little practical advice. There is a choice you have to make in everything you do. So keep in mind that in the end, the choice you make makes you. This evening, we're going to talk about a choice. Now, you don't have to live long on planet Earth before you realize that every single choice you make has this little price tag attached called consequences. Now, some choices that we make, they turn out pretty good. Good price tag. Uh, some turn out not so good. Some choices that we make have consequences that are small. Others, well, some choices have consequences that are literally life-changing and eternity-altering. I mean, just think about this weekend as we celebrate and remember Christ's death on the cross and his resurrection on, on, uh, on Sunday morning. Can, can we all agree that that decision that Jesus made to die on the cross and that decision that his father made to raise him from the dead, can we all agree that that had pretty significant consequences? You see, every decision has a consequence. Now, this, this Easter weekend, we, of course, have been remembering on Good Friday the death of our Savior on the cross. Uh, uh, on uh, tomorrow morning, we will wake up and we will remember and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So the focus, really, in the last couple of days has been rightly on the, on the cross, riveted on the empty tomb. However, I, I want to ask a favor of you for the next few moments. I know we've been riveted in on the cross and the empty tomb, but if we could, let's, let's try to zoom out just a little bit, okay? I want us to zoom out, and I want to include something else in the picture. I, I want us to see Jesus on the cross, but I also want to see that um, thief on this cross next to him and a thief on this cross next to him. Three crosses silhouetted against the sky. Who were these two guys? You know, we, we don't know a lot about those two thieves on the cross as history has labeled them. Now it's true they could have been common thieves. However, I gotta tell you that in the Roman Empire, to deserve death by crucifixion, that was generally not a misdemeanor. This had to be a pretty severe crime. More than likely, these two guys were not your common thieves. They were more what we would call insurrectionists. They, like Jesus, were probably charged with rebellion against the Roman Empire. Now, so you have three gentlemen on the crosses. Now, the one thing they all share in common is they're all nailed to a cross. But the big difference, and the difference we must remember tonight, is that um, 
The two guys on the side were just as guilty as sin. They were caught, they were guilty, but Jesus in the middle was innocent. The two rebels, you see, had made choices in their life. Remember, every choice has a consequence. They had made choices that somehow ended their lives nailed to those two crosses. Now, for those of you who have been hanging around Grace for the last six to seven weeks, we've been doing a series called Living Your Dash. And for those of you who are, are guests tonight, let me explain. When we say living your dash, we're talking about on a tombstone, you know, a grave marker, you've got the date of birth and the date of death engraved in those stones. And what do you have in between? You have that dash. The dash is in between the date of birth and the date of death. Now, we've been learning that God is very interested in how we live that dash. Um, so, what we're going to look at tonight are these two guys on the crosses. And we're going to ask a simple question. How did they live their dashes? And what eternal significance did that have for them? But then more than that, is there a lesson that we can learn from the two thieves? You see, these two rebels hanging on their crosses can teach us a very important lesson about a choice that we make in our lifetime. This choice, this choice not only affects the rest of your earthly life, this choice has eternal consequences. This choice can literally impact every one of our eternal destinies. So, what do we need to learn about uh, your dash and your choice? All right, let's see what we can learn. If you're taking notes, choice number one, you can reject Jesus as your Savior. No beans about it. You're, it's your choice. Ball's in your court. You have the authority, you have the power, you have the free will to reject Jesus as Savior. Now, let me read to you from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, some examples of individuals who made this choice in their dash. All right, are you ready? Matthew 27, verse 38. Two rebels, there's our guys, were crucified with him, Jesus, one on the right and one on the left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself, come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. Now watch this. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. You see, when Jesus Christ came into our world as Savior, many rejected his coming. Amazing, he came to offer forgiveness of our sins, and yet many then and now decided, no, I'm not going to accept, I'm going to reject his offer. Now, many people that day when Jesus and the guys were crucified, many there, as we just read, teachers of the law, uh, the, the, the scribes, uh, many of the Jewish leaders, other people mocked him, ridiculed him. And, and who joined in? The guy on the left, the guy on the right. Both of them joined in mocking, hurling insults at Jesus. So here's what I want us to do, just to get a visual. I've got a couple of buckets up here. And I, I want you to imagine that, uh, imagine this red and this blue. Imagine this as their dash, okay? Their life. The, the guy on the left, the guy on the right, this is their dash. 
Now, you probably notice something immediate that, well, that sure is a short little piece compared to the rest of the row. You see, the colored part, that represents the length of your life, the length of the thieves' lives. The bucket, that represents all of eternity. So I got a couple of volunteers, uh, Josh, and I got to uh, come up here, Ron. Um, I want you to take this, and we noticed both of these guys made the same choice, right? They both decided we're going to reject Jesus. And what we have to understand is their choice, their decision during the colored part of the rope, their decision, I want you to notice, affected not just their earthly lives. What else did it affect? All of eternity. All of eternity. So just imagine these ropes going on and on and on and on. Can we all agree that um, they made a choice that had severe consequences? We can all agree on that? Okay. Now, something that we really need to understand here, and that is we need to understand the concept of choice. Sometimes I think we get going so fast in life that we actually forget about the consequence of choice. And, and here's what you have to remember. In fact, I put it in your notes. God has always been about giving people free will. That's just a part of who God is. As far back as the Garden of Eden, God has given people freedom of choice. And just like Adam and Eve, today we can choose to obey or disobey. We can choose to accept God into our lives or reject God in our lives. However, we've got to understand that every choice we make has what? It has a consequence. Every choice. Do you understand that, that any day, but especially on Easter weekend, God is offering us an incredible offer. God is offering us a personal relationship with him. However, God never forces the decision. Ball's in your court. Every Easter, the ball's in your court. You can take his offer or you can reject his offer. Now, this weekend, we are celebrating the fact that Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sin and that God raised him on the third day to vindicate and validate everything he did and said as the Son of God and as the Savior of the world. So once again, God is extending that choice, extending that offer. But, once again, we get to make the choice. So, one offer, offers on the table, okay, not for me, this is offer on the table from God. Um, you can, if you decide, you can reject Jesus as your Savior. And God has given you free will. He will respect your choice. As long as you remember that attached to every choice is a consequence. Choice number two. Let's get this one on the table. Choice number two, you can accept Jesus as your Savior. It's amazing how simple the gospel is. It's just a matter of accepting or rejecting. All right, now here's what I want you to do. I want you to imagine yourself standing near the scene of the crucifixion. You're watching this cruel punishment go on in these three men hanging from the cross, and then suddenly something happens. You didn't see it coming. Totally unexpected. There is a startling surprise. That surprise is recorded in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verse 39. Let me read this to you. Get ready for the surprise. 
One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. I got to tell you, if I'd have been standing there that day, I would not have seen that one coming. Amazing. Here at the beginning of the crucifixion, we learn from Matthew that both of the rebels are hurling insults at Jesus. But then at some point, the heart of one changes. Don't know why. Maybe it was something Jesus said from the cross. Maybe it was the way he he saw Jesus say, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. We don't know what changed that man's heart, but we know something changed. This guy did a 180 degree about face. This rebel experienced the ABCs of a changed heart. Again, the gospel is so simple. I love the simplicity of Almighty God getting it down so a child can understand it and a lot of brilliant people, it kind of goes right over their head. What are the ABCs of the change of heart? The A is admit. Notice this guy admits his guilt. He says to the other thief, man, we're guilty as charged. We deserve what we're getting. The B is believe. Believe. What does the guy do? He he turns to Jesus on the cross and he believes that Jesus can save him. And then the C is confess. He confesses Jesus as the king. Remember me when you come into your, what? Kingdom. He recognizes Jesus as the king. Now I got to tell you, his wise choice that day To accept Jesus' offer, get ready, totally reverses the consequences of his life. Now think about this. That morning when he was nailed to the cross, he was on his way to an earned eternity in hell, separated from God. But he changed his mind. He said, you know what? I'm going to go a different direction. He made a change in his choice. So we're going to have to fix this. Uh, Josh, this guy made a change, so we're going to have to bring his life all the way back, and we're going to send him down another path. We're going to call that paradise. Hey, all you guys in paradise, wave at me over there. What a change. Now I want you to notice again, guys, when did the change take place? It was during his dash. It was was between his birth and his death. Now look up here. Exactly where was that decision made in this red zone? Right there. Right there. At the very end. And what does Jesus say to a guy who makes the decision right there? Does he say, oh, you should have made that decision when you were a teenager. Did he say, oh, wait, there's a six-month probation. What does he say? Today, you will be with me in paradise. Now, I guarantee you, if if the repentant thief were here tonight, let me tell you one thing he would tell you. Don't wait until you get right there. Accept Jesus back here. 
so you can begin to enjoy eternal life here. Don't wait till the end. By the way, uh, you don't know when the end is going to come. See, I'm a pastor. I do a lot of funerals. Now, a few people know when they're going to die. I got to tell you, a large percentage of the funerals I do, they didn't have that opportunity right there. What's the message? Choice number two. Now, choice is yours. You can, you can go this route if you want to, but it leads to a Christless eternity. Or you can make the, make the wise choice, and it will lead to a Christ-filled eternity. It all depends on a choice. So this, in a nutshell, I don't know, maybe I could say this in an Easter egg, <laughs> is the message of Easter. It's that simple. Even a little child can understand the gospel. Jesus Christ came to earth to be our Savior. He died on the cross for my sins and yours. God raised him from the dead to prove he was the Son of God. And now, he extends to every one of us in this room the free will choice. And God will respect you whichever way you decide. You can accept you can reject. Ball's in your court. Just remember, there is a consequence attached to either decision. You know, the old Apostle John figured this out a long time before I did. Listen to what John said in chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. He, Jesus, came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Choice A. Okay, rejected him. Yet, to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. That sounds like a choice to me. So this evening, you can join the wise rebel who died on the cross, but later that day had dinner in paradise. How do you do it? Listen, if you know ABC, you've got the message. Admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Believe that Jesus Christ came to save you and confess Him as King and Lord of your life. By the way, in case you haven't noticed, um, that dash is, you know, as time moves down, that dash is getting shorter by the day. In fact, the rest of your dash is exactly 24 hours shorter than it was this time last night. Now, that's no, no hype. That's just fact. Today, you and I are closer to the end of our dash than we have ever been in our life. So, question. Don't you think it's time for you to make your choice? It's time to make your choice. Now, as you make your decision, though, I want you to remember that there is a choice you have to make in everything you do. So keep in mind that in the end, the choice you make makes you. Let's bow. Just in this quietness before we... Uh, head to the parking lot, and head home to get in bed. I want to lead you in a prayer. If you have never made the choice to accept Jesus Christ 
Will you pray this prayer in your heart with me? Lord Jesus, thank you for creating me and loving me. Even though I've ignored you and gone my own way, I realize now that I need you in my life and that I'm sorry for my sins. Lord, I ask you to forgive me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I accept your gift of salvation and your offer of forgiveness. Lord, I invite you into my life. Please make me a new person, the person you created me to be. Fill me with your spirit so I can follow you faithfully and grow to become more and more like you every day. I pray this prayer in the name of my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. Happy Easter. It's a good message. Yeah. Let's give God a hand for what he's done. Hey, before we head out, will you do me a favor? You have two cards in your hand that we need you to pass to the inside aisle, that connection card, and also that card that Josh mentioned, the C card, if you've done your, checked in those boxes and put your name and contact information, uh, you don't wanna miss out on this. Great opportunities to learn how to pray Jesus way, all right? Does that sound like a good deal? All right, hey, listen, uh, let's all stand for our closing song. John's gonna lead us.